Sanjay, all shown in green, the next status. So, Srini, just a quick update. There yeah. were some about 30 plus colleges here at the IBC Academia meet. I leaked the information about fifth, talking about the launch of Drona with Hysia. Hmm. Okay. Controlled so, leak. <laughs> controlled leak. <laughs> okay. Ooh. So, uh, Can you hear Nija? me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I joined using my phone. I don't know on my laptop. I'm not able to. Though my uh, internet signal is very good. I mean the broadband is good. I have a chain. I have two broadbands in fact. But I don't know why. Uh, when but I you are now. Laptop, you are now sounding clear. Okay. Stay on this. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the response, Shikant? What are they saying? People are very, very interested. In fact, a lot of faculty members who were there came and said, How can we become part of it? Our, Sir, actually, I told them that, look, our intention is to do 17,000 people as part of this. So, definitely, all of you will be part of it. So, uh, that's where it is. So, I think that's good. Second thing is, I also met up with a couple of private universities now that Mala Reddy is also a university. And Andrag, etc., and CBRIT, all these people who are autonomous. So I spoke to them about Kerala Mind also. You know, saying that we'll be doing this event on 20. They're actually live streaming is started. And, uh, sorry for the disturbance. Oh, sorry. We will catch offline. Sorry sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Shrini, we will give a few, few minutes for uh, students and the to join. Maybe five, we can start. Okay. Okay. So I have also stopped the car so that no disturbance. Okay. Sir, it's already uh, live streaming, sir. You can start now. A very good afternoon to all uh, college management, all faculty members, students, um, all the experts who are there as part of this um, call today. Uh, I'm Srikant from Task, welcoming you to this webinar today on UI UX. Just to quickly introduce Task for the benefit of uh, our experts and others. Task is a government of Telangana initiative in, started in 2014. And over the last couple of years, we have been uh, able to skill about 6 lakh 80,000 plus students across different programs. We have about 110 programs that we offer. We have a partnership with 718 institutions across Telangana, out of which 145 engineering colleges, polytechnics, 15 pharmacy colleges, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are there um, as part of the whole thing. We have skilled about 14,500 um, uh, faculty members also in technology skills as well as facilitation skills. Um, Along with HiCR, we bring you this unique uh, series, which is called Wind Talk series, what industry needs, 
where we don't talk about so much from 30,000 feet above the ground, but look at actual jobs that all of our students can aspire to, job roles, and how they can achieve those things. So with that, I would like to hand it over to our partners, to uh, Hysia, to introduce uh, themselves. Also would like to mention over here that while we are logging onto this platform, it is also being telecasted through TSAT, the state government uh, TV network itself on TSAT Nipuna, which is the government skill channel, as well as uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, social media platforms of Task and Hysia. Um, over to you, Nirja. Hi, hi, Shrikant. Today, I think the honors will be done by Srini. So he will introduce Haisia as well as moderate the session. Fantastic. Uh, so um, Srini, of course, is an old friend. And uh, thank you very much, Srini and uh, uh, Nirja and the entire Haisia team for partnering us in this initiative. Over to you, Srini. Thanks, uh, thanks Shrikant. Uh, it's been a pleasure over the years uh, partnering with TASK, a very unique organization. Uh, across the country, uh, doing so much in building skill base for the industry. Uh, so HICIA, for the benefit of the viewers, is Hyderabad Software Enterprises Association. It's an industry body that was formed in 1991 to promote the cause and interest of IT and uh, IT-enabled services industries. You know, it has uh, survived, prospered, done well over 30 years. And today, this association represents uh, almost 90% of the IT industry out of Telangana, both in terms of the number of people, number of associates or employees, and also in terms of the revenues that, take, that are exported out of Telangana. So we are very proud of that. And uh, the association, like many reputed and respectable trade bodies and associations, does several things for its members. You know, uh, I'll very briefly talk about them. We, we do lot of innovation initiatives. We do corporate social responsibility. We work with government in setting and advising policy matters. And uh, we worry about uh, strategic infrastructure topics that could impact the growth and sustenance of the IT corridor in uh, Hyderabad mainly. So we worry about diversity uh, and promote gender and equity and diversity in the workforce through various initiatives. So several things we do as an association. But bringing the spotlight back to what we are doing, you know, this, is the, this is an important element of the connect with academia that we do. And the reason is very simple. Uh, the students of today are the employees of the industry tomorrow. You know? So for any mature industry or an industry association like ours, it makes eminent sense to you know, go to the students, reach out to the academic institutions, management, faculty, and tell them about what is the industry doing and what, it, what does the industry need uh, in terms of, uh, you know, skills going forward for it to globally become comp competitive and successful. Uh, and therefore, if that knowledge goes to the students, they'll come into the industry much more prepared. It gives them opportunity to learn the right things, uh, upskill their, uh, you know, knowledge and, you know, and then uh, be ready for the industry and be productive as soon as they step into the industry. That's the purpose of these interactions. So we have done several such interventions and in many of them we partnered with TASK. So this particular one has been going on for nearly now four or five months. We have done close to, I think, 10 such sessions. And today's one focuses on, uh, you know, UI and uh, UX. You know, the two terms uh, that are always used, uh, you know, together in the industry. I'm sure many of you are joining today would have heard the terms, but we will learn more about them today, you know. So... That's about HICIA, and I'll now switch to my role today as, as someone moderating this session, uh, where the speakers are to uh, experts you know, in the field. So now it's one thing for all of you who are joining on the webinar today to learn this information from different sources. There is an information explosion out there, right? You know, uh, you can uh, Google, you can read, you can do whatever it is, watch videos on YouTube. But uh, my firm opinion is nothing equals listening to two practitioners, to experts who have built their careers in that particular topic. And the two gentlemen we have today, Prasad Kantamaneni and uh, Ameya Nayak, are two such experts we have. 
and i want to thank kamaya and prasad uh, for joining us today and i'll briefly uh, introduce them uh, kamaya is a certified design professional with over a decade of experience in building products and design teams his experience varies from human machine interface to human computer interface he worked across several domains in the what i mean is industry verticals like healthcare telecom e-commerce aviation electronics retail or wow, automobiles finance hospitality he is currently working for a very reputed firm service now as a senior manager for product design and he is leading the design for two business units you know and uh, he is based out of hyderabad and uh, he is a thought leader he with patents pending for uh, context driven user interface uh, so to summarize we have a real real expert who has built his career who knows you know what design is all about what user experience or user interface is all about switching to uh, prasad he is an entrepreneur after spending time in corporate he founded the ux reactor i'm sure prasad this reactor produces design energy as opposed to nuclear energy you know uh, based in san francisco also having offices here in hyderabad Uh, they have picked up the fast company award for design and have also been recognized by ink magazine as the fastest growing specialty design company so that that kind of justifies what i've been saying these are specialists these are experts you know uh, in the us for 3 years in a row you know so he has also worked as a ux designer for more than 20 plus years and uh, and he's today is joining us despite being away on a offsite kind of a meeting he found a place uh, he trekked a kilometer to reach a place to find some good connection and joining us thank you so much prasad for that uh, truly appreciate uh, so now we will uh, start the session i will uh, first request uh, uh, prasad to open and uh, prasad you know uh, the audience mostly students and maybe some faculty members college managements uh, everyone loves this topic ui slash ux so why don't you give us a brief overview of the topic your uh, perspective of it and and then we'll switch over to amaya to do the same thing and then we can open it up for an interactive uh, discussion over to you prasad sure thank you shridi um, for such a gracious uh, uh, introduction um, and so always a pleasure to share the stage with amaya uh, and uh, you know talk about uh, topics that are relevant to all of us in terms of building up talent obviously from a company perspective we all live and die by talent if it, if we don't get talent we don't exist as companies and so uh, this is a great opportunity so uh, i'm going to very quickly go through my deck and then then we if there follow on questions i'm sure we uh, we can discuss them afterwards but if you could go to the next slide Yeah. So we have multiple offices: San Francisco, Hyderabad, Medellin. Uh, in 2018, we won the Fast Company Award for work done out of the Indian office. And uh, at that time, uh, you know, the other companies that won the same award were Google, IBM, Microsoft. You know, the top companies out there. So it was a fairly prestigious award for us at that time because uh, nobody had heard of us. You know, heard of heard heard about us at that scale. but then since then for the last 3 uh, years uh, we've been the fastest growing specialty design company in the us so that's been a very good recognition of that so if we go on to the next slide um so i think the problem that all of us companies have is we just are struggling for talent i mean uh this is a survey that was done in india and even in the us it's the same numbers in colombia it's the same numbers you're talking about uh you know 69% of all companies in india struggle to find the appropriate people uh and design is even harder to find it's just the nature of it and so the uh you know this is something that uh you know every company struggles this point the next slide and so what we've done our perspective is a ux reactors created a separate group called college that i lead and our goal is we collaborate with other companies that look for design and we all work together to kind of go out uh, identify the appropriate talent mentor them and recruit them so uh, 
a lot of our folks are in all these companies that you see and probably more there's probably about 120 companies or so uh, kind of pick out of our ecosystem. So let's go on to the next slide. So just to give you an understanding what UX is, UX is literally about increasing value to understand, you know, initially it was just, you know, Yahoo Messenger, Google Messenger, Hotmail, where if you wanted to create an account, you had to type in your username, password, you know, your interests, your email address, all of that stuff. And somebody came along and they said, can I create a way to chat without making you fill all that information? In? Can I get you to chat with your friends without inputting the data in? like inviting people in. So they just said, okay, we're going to do WhatsApp. And literally WhatsApp hit its first 200 million users in three years. And it took Facebook more than four and a half years to hit the same number. And again, this is what it fundamentally means is, you know, UX is all about increasing value. And we as UX practitioners have always known it. But in 2015, a very interesting study came out. So let's go on to the next slide. So, this study was interesting in that, uh, if you go to the next slide, let me see. So, yeah. So what happened in that study was they said, we are going to track companies uh, that, uh, you know, over a period of 10 years, and we're going to look at the top 500 companies in the stock market, the S&P 500, and we're going to look at, you know, companies that are leading by design, and we're going to see what is the impact. And they said, if you put $10,000 into a company in 2010 or 2005, uh, the S&P 500 companies would convert that $10,000 into $19,000. But if you come invested in companies that focused on design, that $10,000 would have been closer to $40,000 in 10 years. And when this study come, came out, a lot of companies just sat up and noticed it, and they said, wow there's a huge amount of value. And then that's when design schools and a lot of these programs started taking off and became the norm for uh, senior leadership in companies to be sent to design schools in Stanford or you know, uh, Michigan, University of Michigan. Now it's very common for the top business schools in, around the world to have design schools attached to them. So they expect their business uh, students to actually take design courses. And similarly, design students are expected to take business courses in these top schools. So I think we are kind of stuck on one slide. Uh, I'm only seeing the uh, Yahoo Messenger and the WhatsApp. Yeah, can we move to the next slide? slide? Yeah. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. So when you look at companies, traditionally you think, oh, Coca-Cola, it doesn't do anything IT, but no, it's actually a big design-centric company. And literally they found that companies that focus on design return 211% more money and value to their investment as compared to just companies that are in the top 500 companies. So let's go on to the next slide, please. So more specifically, when we look at India, um, you know, UX has been like, you know, this is funny because even when I started my career, that was the first time when they said user experience is going to be one of the top 10 jobs. That was 20 plus years ago. And even today, it's the same situation. It's like user experience has consistently been in the top five jobs around the world. And today it is, uh, you know, a UX professional who is able to work at that level can write their ticket to anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere in the world and work and you have jobs open and visas open because you just don't have enough people. Uh, and just to understand within India, we generate about just, I think last year, we generate about 250 people with degrees in design as opposed to the requirements. So just in Hyderabad, what they say is, uh, there's a one is to five ratio. For every five engineers, you need one designer. In Hyderabad, I think we have in the order of about seven lakh engineers. That means you need almost about 1.4 lakh designers. And that's not, we have less than 10,000 designers in Hyderabad. So you can look at the demand gap that is there uh, just for design within the market. So if we go on to the next slide, So when you look at design roles, there's a lot of differentiation and there's a lot of understanding that is required. Level is user interface. So user interface is you take something and make it look good and that's pretty much it. So it's not a UX kind of a role, it's purely making something look good. So it's graphics, colors, screens, you know, 
these kinds of folks will have a lot of tools on their resume and that's what it is. And or usually for a three-year experience person, you would see a salary in the range of three to eight lakh, eight lakh per annum. And when you look at the work style, these people will say, I'm working on tools. What tools do you use? But the next level that you look at is user experience. So user experience is a highly lucrative field. So for the same three years experience, the market pays anywhere between 10 to 25 lakhs per annum for user experience. And I suspect service now pays a lot more because your salaries are kind of uh, at the next level. Um, but again, you know, when you're looking at user experience people um, in the, you know, when you ask them, what do you do? They say, I focus on experiences. I'm designing experiences. What does somebody feel? The simplest example that I can say is you can get food from a restaurant. You can eat at your own home where your mom is feeding you, right? So ultimately the product is the same, the food that you're eating. But when your mom feeds you, she doesn't just think about the food. She says, oh, I think you like sambar, I think you like this dish, I think you like that, I made this for you. So it's that experience, or so your mom sits with you while you're eating food, it's the experience that you get. Whereas when you go to a restaurant, somebody just puts a plate in front of you, you pay them money, you eat, you go, you don't have any relationship with that, experience, with that restaurant. So the user experience person is really thinking about how do I create experiences and relationships with, with, between my product and the customer that is using my product. So within, XP, within UX, there are multiple specializations, just like in medicine, you have MBBS, you have multiple specializations. You have a specialization for design prototyping, interaction design, research, visual design, design strategy. So, but just to cut it short, interaction design engineers and architects make amazing interaction designers. Uh, when you look at researchers, these are people that are the psychology or they are doing ethnography or uh, you know, sociology, those kinds of branches, social sciences folks make really good researchers. When you look at visual design, you're looking at people who have good aesthetics. It's a fine art, sculpture, whatever, those kinds of musicians I've seen make really good visual designers. Again, people with a very creative uh, bent of mind. And then design strategy is actually a very specialized area where you're looking at all of this and you're saying, how should we strategize in terms of building a product? Now, the next level, when you're looking at customer experience, you're working your salaries of one crore plus very easily. And it usually takes about seven years to kind of get to that level at a minimum. Uh, but then at, at, at a CX level, you don't really care about specific products, but you're looking at the process, environment, strategy, the business strategy, how do I change? Those are the kinds of problems that somebody is solving at a customer experience level. But overall, when you look at it, I like to compare it to like police recruitment. When you get into a job, you can join as a constable, you can join as an SI, or you can join as a IPS person, right? It's the same thing, even within UX, you can say, I'm going to join as a UI, work like seven, eight years and somehow get into UX, or you start preparing for UX from day one and you kind of understand, but understand that a customer experience person understands UX, understands UI. A UX person understands UX and they understand UI. So it's everything is a subset of the other. And that's how we kind of need to think about and plan our career. So if you go on to the next slide. So, you know, within our community, again, for us, our biggest problem is talent within the college community. So we, what we said was I can just go and recruit five people, 10 people from different colleges, or I can basically create a system where interested designers come in and learn and they use, uh, learn through our ecosystem. So what we do is we identify three different groups of people. The first group of people are, I'm curious about design. I want to learn more. The second group of people are, you know, I've learned more. Now I'm decided I want to build a career. And then the third group of people are people who say, you know, I, I've worked for at least a year. I know now I need to upgrade myself and I want to get a better job. So that's the way we kind of look at it. So the next, if you go to the next slide. So for the curious people, the biggest challenge that you see is there's a lot of content that's available. If you go on to the next slide, please. Next slide. So for the curious people, the biggest challenge is you'll see lots of YouTube videos, lots of content. Udemy, Coursera, Skillshare, you know, there's hundreds of these websites that are available out there. 
I think what, what we realize is most people struggle with where should I start and how do I know I've learned UX. And so what we have done is we've created this website at college.com is our website, but there it's completely free resources. Let's go to the next slide. So what we do is we've identified 36 topics that anybody needs to learn to kind of start, start their career in UX. And so we have also broken them, them down into different specializations. Where we say, if you want to do visual design, what, what stuff do you need to know? If you want to learn interaction design, what stuff do you need to know? So you know for, for what specialization, what content you need to learn. And these 36 topics are standard. So if you master these, you're good to go. And all of this content is free. You go in, you do go into the website, click on the link, and then you should see able to see all the content. Plus you will see references to other places where you can go and learn if you want to do this at a deeper level. We also have free talks uh, pretty much on a, a monthly basis where we have experts coming in from around the world talking about design and you know, how they implement, how they solve design at their company. So we've had people uh, from SAP, you know, the head of AI and machine learning design at SAP. We've had the head of uh, uh, you know, design and cloud uh, from Google come in from Amazon come in. So the head of Oppo came in to kind of talk about design. So we have a lot of leaders coming in because everybody cares about making sure that the talent is up there. So everybody comes in. We also do live workshops every month for students. And all of these are fairly, you know, it's like mostly free. It's like the, the courses are all free. The talks are all free. The workshops are very cheap. It's almost like about uh, 750 bucks for the whole year. And the intention is that we just want people to be serious when they come in. But the idea is you get exposed to state of art knowledge in this program. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. And what we do is when somebody comes in, we are actually tracking every individual that comes into our ecosystem. So we look at, you know, what is the discipline? What are the execution skills? Because with every workshop, everything, we give homeworks. And when we look at that, we are able to rank our people. And that's how the companies that we work with are able to identify which people they want to hire. Uh, but again, you know, it's a fairly simple thing. We are trying to solve the problem for our, ourselves and the, our partner companies is we give these industry companies, we give these trainings, give them uh, challenges. You, you know, solve the challenges, you get your ranking, and then we know that you're good, we pick you up. And that's the simplest way that I can explain what we do uh, for our talent pool. But again, you know, uh, people say the economy is going down, but interestingly enough, every time the economy has gone down, we've just had more business. Uh, regardless of whether the economy is going up or down, there's just such a shortage for designers uh, that, uh, you know, whether the company, whatever the situation is, there's always demand for good designers. So the key question that you need to think about for yourself is really how do you train yourself and how do you get up there? So if you go on to the next slide. And I think my advice, and I know a lot of you are third and fourth year uh, students, my advice is start as soon as possible uh, because learning is not like a six month training. It's not like Amir Pet. I wish I could tell you that, that you could go somewhere in six months, you'll become an amazing designer. That doesn't happen. You have to practice. You have to learn. You have to understand the philosophy if you want to get into these opportunities. So start as soon as possible, practice, learn, put your time, work hard now, and I can promise you that there are so many jobs that it's going to just make your head turn. I mean, I can give you two examples of it. One guy who came in, uh, we referred him within our community. Um, and I think Srini will probably know the CEO's group that we manage in, in uh, WhatsApp. Uh, this person had 10 interviews in 12 hours and six offers on the spot. Right? Another person came in and uh, they came through the system and he interviewed with five companies and the final offer, he was, his starting salary was 5.7 lakhs as a UI designer. He upgraded into UX and he had five interviews, five job offers, and the final offer was 22 lakhs. Right? Well, sir, I've never sir, seen thanks, this. Thanks. Uh, thanks. That was, uh, that's very, very, uh, you know, you, you concluded it on a nice note. I mean, I'm taking the liberty to interrupt uh, in the interest of time. Sure. No, so no, guys, no, no. Uh, whoever is watching, there is tons of money on the table. Okay. So we are not talking just in thin air. Uh, but of course, to get that money, what you need to know, Prasad covered that. But I would request now Abeya to also give his perspective before I go back to what the gentleman to with some 
pointed questions you know so amaya so you you already according to prasad is making those tons of money so a rich designer talking now so <laughs> please <laughs> can we can we get amaya's presentation you, you want to run your presentation amaya or you want to talk i can i can do it pretty quickly yeah yeah you have, we have your ppt up yeah uh, i have i have interacted with sir so i know my minds align on lot of aspects of where the industry is. so i'm not going to myself you can go to slide ahead uh, just to give you a brief, a brief background i i am product senior manager of product design at service now. and service now is a workflow platform company and we are actually into enterprise product design and probably i'll talk a little bit about parts of Let me introduce you to my journey a little bit and talk about especially your estate. I want to talk about how how did that about your voice is breaking when I was in the third. Your voice is breaking, uh, Amaya. Continue. Uh, let me let me switch to another device. Or maybe you want to Rakesh? Will it help you to show off the video? Yeah. Is this better? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. So uh, yeah. So let's move to the couple of slides ahead. Uh, I was just sharing that you know I'm part of Service Now, which is a enterprise uh, company. So we work on uh, enterprise product design. There are various aspects of product design, but I thought I would uh, like to share a little bit about my journey uh, because I know a lot of you are in the third year, fourth year kind of stage, and how I started about going about design and how I got introduced. Uh, when i was doing my mechanical engineering so if you can go a couple of slides ahead slide number 3 two slides forward please two slides forward please you can change directly you can change directly i will make you oh i can change okay thank you okay so uh, here is where i started right uh, i started as a industrial designer i am a mechanical engineer so in the third year of my mechanical engineering uh me and my friends we wanted to participate in a competition in germany called formula student germany and that was about building race cars right and that was when i started okay it's an engineering um, there were any indian colleges who had done this kind of an activity we had to raise our own money to build a car that can sustain that kind of a race and went through so we ended up building one car the red one that you see where we were just trying to get money and our goal there was aesthetics can we make something that looks really nice cool flashy and get the money that's so that people can trust us and the second one was really a functional one that we built right and that is when i got introduced to ergonomics a field in industrial design uh, human machine interface design right understanding about how how we interact with lot of things around us and uh, how we can make that life simple right and from there uh, when i started my professional journey so after that i did my masters in industrial design from iit bombay and uh, i then got into a physical world right i built lot of electronic devices lot of these camera devices uh, built touch screen kiosks and uh, built uh, uh, if you go to malls there are lot of these uh, events that are done so we used to sell televisions and we had to build an experience that is immersive enough for our customers to understand what our product offers right uh, i built showrooms i used to do the showroom design as well so anywhere where we can deliver the experience of our product to our customers was our my focus and i i went very deep into that field uh, understanding how people interact into the physical world right and this is one part of design that we often see uh going to the uh, and after that i kind of made a switch and i switched over to a field of what we today predominantly called as ux design uh, uh i sometimes like to refer to it as a digital product design because that's where we are there are certain nuances that are different across these fields but essentially design is a mindset and it's consistent across what you do and in this journey i have worked across uh, applications that are complex enough like airline operation systems 
medical healthcare products and then this is set up of varying sizes like a very large video wall in a command center where there are at least 15 to 16 to 64 TVs that are there to laptops to tablets to mobiles right so so the the impact that design can have and uh, the opportunity that it has for you once you start learning about design right is is immense and i was able to seamlessly transition between these two that's very drastically different but at the same time you know the fundamentals are so consistent with it that you can do that transition so if you are hearing your friends some of them are talking about this physical product some of them are talking about digital products give it a try it's really really an interesting field as you go along i learned what i enjoy the most and based on that i explored a lot and moved my fields right and today uh with that i am in service now where i build uh, enterprise products and uh, we are trying to bring in consumer grade design to enterprise products right our office products need not be very boring <clears throat> so that's the uh, current uh, work that i do and probably i'm going to skip a little bit uh, since uh, prasad covered a little bit about design and us design but essentially if someone asks you like if you have question i think this was a question that i was asked by uh, one uh, developer when i was trying to onboard him into design was he asked like are, is this art is this science what do you exactly do and design is really an amalgamation of these two things right it's not an exact science that you know it cannot be run through a machine learning or an ai logic and it will give you a solution the same way every time but at the same time uh, there are scientific principles prasad talked about psychology being a core to research how we understand humans how we interpret them so there are, there are core sets of sciences that you apply and the way to apply that is an art so that's why i think that you know design is an amalgamation of both this science and art field so if you are in either side if you have a certain kind of mind bend creative bend but you are in a technical field great this is where you can you know leverage those your skills which you often don't get to do in your curriculum right so give it a shot moving on uh i would like to talk a little bit about uh the impact of design okay in our society why is this important what are you going to achieve when you get into this field like beyond uh, uh, the compensation that prasad talked about right what do you really how do you drive impact so let's understand the negative impact of bad designs poor de de design can make a product very difficult to use right poor design can cause huge financial losses there was a financial loss in a bank that lost 500 million dollars uh, just because of an error and uh, that screenshot in the center is something that is not a very old ui it is what that bank uses today to do lot of their transactions uh, it can induce a nationwide panic there was a fake alert that went out saying that a ballistic missiles are approaching an island right because of a design flaw of how that ui and interface was designed right at the same time poor ux design can also be fatal there have been lot of uh, cases uh, in healthcare industry where overwhelming complicated to look at products like these are used and a uh, uh, lot of medical professionals have to learn this product and uh, you can google about this how how bad ux killed jenny there is a case study around that how a little girl was killed because of a uh, inability to find an alert that you see here where the arrow is pointing it's a tiny alert that shows up giving an instruction to medical professionals what they need to do right so uh, if you want to understand really the impact of design we should look at you know what is the impact of poor design right and i think that's where you will feel that you know there is a lot of value that you can add and uh, i think where do i start uh, i think there are few things like you know there are there are lot of design schools that are there there are lot of certifications that happen and by no means uh, i am promoting any of these but these are some of the ones that are top of my mind right but if you have a, a opportunity right i have two suggestions that you can do as a a uh, student to get started go for that education 
from pure play design schools who teach you really the fundamentals of design right or go for things like which are internships and apprenticeships right uh, uh, the certifications don't really help you at this early stage in career you cannot spend 6 days 2 weeks with someone on online and try to learn design don't do that you will be spending a ton of money and it does not build value i have advised people that you know if nothing works out just go and work with someone who is a great designer for free tell him that i want to work with you i want to learn from you do it for free that would be lot more valuable than going for any kind of certification and uh, uh, i had visited the ux reactor office the kind of set uh, setup that prasad has there i really like that uh, the way of training right Uh, i always felt like design is something where there has to be like a master apprenticeship model that somebody is teaching you coaching you throughout that early phase and essentially the learning never ends so go for those holistic ways of learning right now in your career that if you are looking for right and uh, as prasad said that you know that foundational thing will get you to the right place uh, probably at that middle layer of the pyramid that uh, prasad talked about right which is essentially what uh, ux design is about moving on let me sorry um, the next probably an aspect i would like to touch on is you will often hear this question which tools right and people get bogged down a lot by which tools and we keep talking about that my suggestion to you is pen and paper are the best tools with to start with right and there is one more tool that i always like is curiosity have curiosity right you need to keep watching how your customer users are doing how the consumers of those products are interacting with those products whether digital whether physical and you would have that ability to ask questions to yourself ask questions to others if you are working you are close with some expert designers ask them questions the questions are one your great tools that will help you learn in this field right so don't don't give up on that and then if people are still asking i do have as a recommendation that you know there are tons and tons of tools pick up the ones figma it's available across windows and mac it's most commonly used today in the industry it's also free uh, adobe xd is also free fairly widely used in industry uh, so either of these tools are great uh, but uh, i think the best tools are still the pen paper and your abyss question ask question so oh, yeah that's all i had uh, for right now and problem so thanks for me i think so I think uh, both of you both of you have put a lot of information on the table. I think uh, I think uh, that's very very useful. Now, now let me come back and ask one question to both of you. Srini, you have an echo coming. I have an echo. I don't know why. It was not there before. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can still hear myself. I don't know. Myself, Are I you able know. to hear me? Oh uh, yes, sir. Maybe you connected twice. Just check it uh, from other devices if you have. No, any. no, no. I am not connected from any other device. No, I am only connected from this laptop. Now it's okay, sir. Okay. Now it's okay. Okay, fine. Right. Yes. Now with just about fifteen, sixteen minutes left, let me come to this basic question. You put a very valid statement out there, Amaya.
sell online, and grow your business with Wix e-commerce. Create a beautiful storefront for your brand by customizing product pages, galleries, cart, and checkout. Then let shoppers pay however they like. Reach new shoppers on social media and marketplaces and engage existing customers with subscriptions, gift cards, and loyalty programs. Set up automated abandoned cart recovery to entice customers to complete their purchase. Fulfill orders and manage inventory from a single dashboard for all sales channels. Make insightful business decisions based on detailed traffic, sales, and revenue reports. Run high-performing marketing campaigns with built-in Facebook and Instagram ads that reach the right shoppers. Go to Wix e-commerce and create your online store today. इनविजिबल रह जाते हैं बिजनेस जो ऑनलाइन नहीं ले जाते गो डैडी डोमेन लो वेबसाइट बनाओ बिजनेस ऑनलाइन ले जाओ पूरे इंडिया में विजिबल हो जाओ Вроде всё нажал. Так, есть кто? Или я рано приперся? Ну-ка признавайтесь. Признавайтесь, есть кто? И вообще, все ли я запустил? Вот в чем вопрос. Так, Майкл есть. Отлично, нас уже двое. Уже прекрасные новости. Если слышно, видно, ставьте плюсики. Кидайте работы. А, вам надо сказать.